The hypersexualization of kids in our modern societies is a problem. The fact that videos like this are material that's stressing the same points are being disliked and ridiculed is also a concern. The hypersexualization of society, period, is responsible for sex addicted drones and plenty of broken homes. Destruction of the general family unit has been achieved by persistently blending sex, love, promiscuity, and cheating in all media formats. From the day that someone is born, they are inundated with advertisements, trying to sell false emotion or lifestyle, as well as unrealistic and mostly inappropriate media messages. Children have become the main target of major corporations seeking to gain loyal customers for life. Not only that, but you can hardly find TV shows or movies without sex blatantly or subliminally. We as girls are being portrayed as objects while being taught to act as such. We are being taught to accept six-year-olds as sexy on TV shows like Toddlers and Tiaras, where the children dress like hookers from Pretty Woman and pop culture occult icons, not to mention the swimsuit modeling. These girls are going to be damaged for life. The following presentation may help you understand more about this issue. Thank you for watching. This is Sarah Sapphire on ODD TV. I'll tell you what's the worst part about television is the is the programming, the philosophy. Okay, I mean the the manipulating of your mind, the philosophy, the the the, the mentality, the the system of thinking, the ideology. That's what's wrong with television. That's what's wrong with That's where they're really getting in your head. Take, for example, Walt Disney, right? And many people that will preach against the TV, they'll preach against the movies, they'll preach against Hollywood because it's obvious that that stuff is bad. But then they'll say, well, well, we watch Disney movies. And I've been to the home of preachers and Christians who would never watch TV or the movies, but yet they have the whole library of the Walt Disney movies. You know those white plastic cases? And they have them all lined up. And I mean, they have tons of them lined up. Scores. I don't know how many there are, but there's hundreds of them. They have them lined up and, and lined up. And they have their kids watching those movies all day long. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to prove to you right now that those movies are wicked. What? Disney movies? Come on. You're crazy. They're rated G. Well, let's see. First of all, did you know this? Did you know that Disney movies are filled with subliminal messages. Subliminal messages. Now, we're talk what are we talking about tonight? Sorcery. What are we talking about tonight? Uh, getting inside your mind and messing with you. Uh, controlling your thought process by, by uh, supernatural means or demonic means. Or Hey, I'm going to tell you something. Disney movies are filled with subliminal messages. And you say, oh, that's a hoax. I've seen it with my own eyes. When I was a teenager, I had a friend of mine send me down at his house and show me the subliminal messages in the Disney movies. They're filled with subliminal messages. Let me give you some examples. The Lion King, filled with subliminal messages. Okay, all throughout the movie, there are pornographic pictures hidden in the movie. Like you'll be watching the movie, and just for a few seconds, something filthy will come on. Like off to the side, there will be some kind of a, you know, reproductive anatomy will, will pop up, you know, over here. And then, and then over here, there's this one point where the lion, you know, he, he kind of goes like, like this. And a cloud of dust comes up and just spells the word sex. And the word sex is, is put in the Lion King movie subliminally, literally, hundreds of times. Hundreds of times, the, 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 the shapes on the screen will spell the word. And I've seen it. I mean, I had my friend sit me down at his house and pausing the movie, showing me the word S-E-X popping up on the screen at different times because he knew where they were. And he would show me these things. Another one. Uh, and they all are filled with it. You know, Aladdin is another one. Thanks for sticking up for girls mm -hmm. on International Day of the Girl. What's the message? The message is to support girls. We need to give girls to concentrate on what's on the inside and not what's on the outside. You're a bright woman and you've succeeded. It's not because of what you look like. It's because of your brain. It's because of your skills. It's what, how you've developed. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to be encouraging our girls. And we're trying to do this through the Brave Girl Alliance. And what is that? The Brave Girl Alliance, there are 15 women who have come together throughout the world to ask media, retailers, uh, major retailers to provide 
healthy messages and healthy images for girls. It's not about being angry, it's about being equal. equal. Mm -hmm. And let's stop sexualizing our young girls because it's not right. There's nothing about it that's right. I know. You know, the standards back then were actually um, a little bit healthier. Um, and now today we've got size zero. But I was actually told not to speak on jobs. Don't let people know I was intelligent. And that led me to understand that people would like you to play like you're a vacuous, empty, mindless person. And that's a negative image and message to be giving young girls in the first place. And, and to exploit girls to the point now where we're sexualizing children, um, our children's well-being needs to come before corporate profit. The, the advertisers and, and media in general are setting the bar very low for society, and this is the lowest it's gone. And we need to say no, not on our watch. This can't happen anymore. And I know I speak for many parents and many educators across the nation that these images, just we don't get to debate whether or not they're okay, acceptable, inappropriate. It's children. They're being s exploited. I think that girls sometimes feel like they get their value out of being um, looked at as a sexual being and they think the only way to do that is by being noticed for cleavage for shortness of skirt shorts whatever teen girls specifically turn to young celebrities as role models for how they want to look young children without proper guidance don't understand the difference between dressing appropriately like Hannah Montana and being cute and dressing like Miley Cyrus, which is a little bit less cute and more sexual. When you like their music, you'll, you'll tend to like follow them on social media and you'll see what they're wearing and, they're, and like some unconscious part of you will think, oh, they're popular and I want to be popular, so I'll try to act more like them. Despite the pressure, some young girls, like Campbell Hamai, choose to dress more modestly. usually have a standard that says shoulders to knees, no one touches, no one sees. However, since modest clothing for teenage girls is hard to come by, Campbell sometimes has difficulty maintaining her standards. All the time whenever I'm shopping, I have to think about, okay, what can I add to this shirt to make it more modest? Like, if I think a tank top is cute, I have to think, do I want to put a jacket over it or do I want to wear something underneath it? We are talking about the sexualization of little girls in today's world. Now, here's a doll from Mattel. Uh, I believe this one is Claudine the Wolf. Nice, huh? You can see the, the, there's a midriff thing here, and there's like a thong. It's awesome for little girls. Uh, she, she's, by the way, her message is, on, I guess, on the box is, my hair is worthy of a shampoo commercial, and my favorite activity is shopping and flirting with boys. That's wonderful. Really? <laughs> okay, look at this one. This is Cleo Denial. Uh, the schedule on the back of her box includes readying herself for public adoration. Oh, look at that. She has time for a mani-pedi. Uh, stylist comes in at 2 o'clock. I'm readying myself for public adoration. Um, I'm just saying. I'm not so sure that's the stuff I'd be purchasing for my children. I... In G-rated animated films, the female characters wear the same amount of sexually revealing clothing as the female characters in R-rated movies which is pretty horrifying. I mean, what are we putting that much uh, sexuality and, uh, you know, hypersexuality uh, into things aimed at the littlest kids for? There was research that just uh, came out that showed that girls as young as six years old have started to self-sexualize. In other words, they have started seeing themselves through the male gaze and realizing that they need to be sexy in order to be appreciated at six years old. And this is a, a very new development. We knew that women and uh, teenage girls were doing that. So clearly, the culture is sending a very negative message to girls and to boys about girls when the female characters are constantly shown in this uh, sexy light. Corporate America has fallen in love with girls like Grace and Olivia. Tweens, kids roughly between 8 and 12, they've got tremendous buying power. Tween is a term popularized by marketers and advertisers, an age group defined to sell them stuff, from books and entertainment to clothes. With the tween fashion industry, you're talking about a multi-million dollar industry. Alex Morris is a reporter for New York Magazine. She recently wrote about tweens and fashion. You're talking about 
an age group that is sort of a sweet, in a sweet spot because these kids, for the first time, are, have access to their own money. Eight to 12 year olds now have $43 billion in spending power in the U.S. every year, and sex sells in America, so corporations targeting all that teen and even tween money are selling sex to them. Critics even have a term for it corporate pedophilia. You have a rack of clothing that is appropriate for an 11 year old next to a rack of clothing that isn't. It's certainly blurring the lines and it's making it harder for parents to be able to, to sort of set boundaries. And the entertainment industry isn't making it any easier for parents either. A few years ago, Miley Cyrus was the sweet Hannah Montana on the Disney Channel. Now she's in black leather hot pants. She's 17. Ashley Tisdale of High School Musical is now cranking it up. And Nickelodeon's Amanda Bynes graced Maxim's couple. The easiest way for a female celebrity to sort of transition from being a child star to an adult star, the pathway is through their sexuality. There's new research proving that all this sexuality aimed at younger girls is harmful. The American Psychological Association released a report earlier this year finding that girls exposed to such imagery are more likely to experience body dissatisfaction, depression, and lower self-esteem. The focus on celebrities for young people is so significant and they, and it's the whole thinking of if I am famous, if I'm thin, if I'm rich, if I'm beautiful, then I will be happy. The only way to really break that is for people in Hollywood to make a choice and the actors and the actresses to say, I'm going to choose to not just be an object, I'm going to choose to make to do things that are for me. I'm going to choose perhaps not to have plastic surgery because I know as a role model what I'm doing to other people. These things that are happening aren't progressive. Um, they're dumbing down people and unfortunately it's having a lot of impact because you can see that uh, uh, people are growing up much younger and faster and yet the things that they should be caring about are being lost because they feel that uh, advertising is telling them what they should be they should find out for themselves what they should be. The sexiness concern is being, you know, moved younger and younger and younger, and there's even research that shows that, you know, six-year-old girls are talking about wanting to be hot and wanting to be sexy. It's really normal now for there to be this little discourse, this little conversation that you see among the girls that are sort of playing, and, you know, you could say that Barbie is sort of a little kernel of, <laughs> you know, a little core of that that sort of grew and grew and grew, but, you know, the Barbies that were played with in 1965 were not always about how do I make myself sexy, you know, and I look really hot in this, and yeah, you do, and, <laughs> you know, let's go out and party, you know, and, and that's a sort of play script that you didn't see little kids having before, and they have it now. I am disturbed about the idea of girls being sexy and then getting to that line of sex. And so they're asked to be very, very sexualized at younger and younger ages, yet then they don't quite know what to do with what they've been given. So here I am, a little sexual object, yet I don't really know a whole lot about sex, and I'm supposed to be sexy for the boy, yet I don't quite know why I want to do that. And so it's really disturbing to me because these kids are getting into things that are pushing them over a line that they're not ready for when they actually really should be out playing and they should be having fun and not thinking about this. But our world is pushing them into being sexual objects at younger and younger ages.